She would arrogantly laugh while flexing with the child support check, referring to it as, mommy's paycheck. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. These family revenge stories, show that the blood of the covenant isn't always thicker, than the water of the womb. We start off with an entitled mom so bad, she ended up in the local newspaper for being a prick, twice. Followed by an entitled mom exploiting her children and ex-husband for child support, to enjoy the fruits of other people's labor. Lastly, a story about a parasitic entitled mom holding control over her daughter, leeching from her benefits and illness. Before we start, give the like button some motherly love, after it being punished so much on this channel already. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. My mother was so terrible, she she's been in the local newspaper for being a prick twice. Some might blame this all on the fact she's a drug addict, but even when she wasn't under the influence of drugs, she was a mean and slippery little one. So you get she's a bad person, but let's go back to the beginning. The very beginning of her being evil. I was around 8 or 9, maybe I needed to be punished, I don't remember nor feel the need to care. But she sent me to the corner. I felt whatever a child should feel and protested by not staying in the corner. She would yell at me while shaking my little body and I resisted, as I did not want her to touch me like that. Her eyes would fill with rage as she would pick me up and throw me through the room at the wall. She just threw me. A young kid that probably accidentally broke a lamp or took a quarter from a jar she had hidden. She threw me at a wall, resulting in a wall crack and potential concussion. Freaking insane in the membrane. Flash forward to when I'm 13 and when a lot of this next doo-doo happens, in which I'll boil the worst parts down. We move to a city with cool places, decent second-hand game shops, antique stores and a junior hockey team called the Peets. We live in an apartment and my devilish mother meets an impressionable man around her age. We all do the obligatory, he's not so bad and allow him into our lives. I was growing up while knowing my mother was a user of narcotics, but I find out they are doing heroin and hard stuff. She would ask me to throw out the garbage and only later I realized, the needles sticking out that could have possibly killed or infected me were drug needles. She got in literal knife fights with this lovely man she was seeing, making me walk my young sister to my aunt's. Because their problems were affecting us to such an extent we weren't safe. She lost the place when I was 14, putting us in a women's shelter with a nice park beside it. Irresponsibly she had prescribed medication and took four times the recommended amount right in front of the staff. The staff saw this and were alarmed by the sight. Worried for us and her own health, she was rushed to the hospital and my sister and I were placed in foster care, both with different aunts. Half a year later she tried to end herself but failed, because a cop caught her. This'll sound morbid, but I wanted him not to find her. You'll know why soon enough. This attracted pity and later my aunt wanted me to pick either foster care or going back to her care. I only picked her because everyone else said she deserved someone in her life. So fast forward a year. Only minor doo-doo happened, but my grandfather had a failed chemo thing, don't know what happened exactly but his health faded fast. I hope he rests in peace. Everyone visited him at my aunt's house for his final days, not a week into this and my mother finds a dealer, gets high and tries to make me get in the car with her. Knowing this was crazy, I resisted. She gets angry and drags me while I'm screaming, she falls and crushed one of my cousins who was sleeping nearby. The commotion woke up my other family members and they would keep her from taking me into her car. My mom would call the police but ironically she would be the one getting arrested. Grandpa passes, but because she was disturbed, she went back home when she was released from the police and only showed up to the funeral being a mess. At this point I was forced to go home with her, but over the next two months I get tired of her narcotics lifestyle and make an attempt to leave. But get this, it resulted in her attempting to end me with a hammer. Seriously, no joke. Who does that? After the impressive struggle on my side, I got hold of the hammer and immediately ran to the police station. She came in later, telling the cops, no no, I didn't do that, he's young and he doesn't know what he's saying. B. 
Because there's no blood on me or the hammer and there are no alarming injuries, combined with no other place to stay for me, they didn't know what to do. They chose to let her off the hook. So I was on my own, so it was time to get revenge. I'm back home, waiting to try and escape again. When she leaves to get something from the store. I grab valuables that are mine, including my Nintendo, break her television purposely and left, never seeing her again. When older, I remember catching a sight of her at a beer festival I was waiting through. But she was too drunk and dumb to notice me and that's the actual last time I saw of her. I find out she only had the place we got because she got child tax benefit, which allowed her to get funds to take care of a child. She purposely kept on receiving these funds for months while she wasn't taking care of me. I make sure it's cut off and find out a couple months down the line that she lost the place. She became homeless and was never allowed access to the women's shelter. Making her situation really fricked, as she could only visit my sister and some other family members. Who didn't seem to care much anymore. I've slowly gotten better, left that city so she never gets the chance to see her son again and my life is better, this was almost two years ago. In these two years she tried to stick my dad on me. Who is another homeless person but with rich parents allowing him a little access to stuff. Found out he wanted to add me on Facebook and such. I block the requests, I find out she's contacting my sister and tell my poor sister to refrain from replying. She does, but later blocks her on every site to stop contact. This was on my advice, to not let her in her place. That lovely boyfriend she was with, the drug guy died of a carfentanil overdose and now she's alone. I'm willing to share my story, but it's not meant to belittle single mothers nor people with mental illness. I do still love my mom, but this was a story about how things can come back to bite you. So just some backstory here, my parents divorced when I was just in kindergarten, so I was no more than six. My mom got full custody of us and she suffered from mental illness. I believe she has borderline personality disorder, and she was also a typical narcissistic parent. Anyway, ever since the divorce, she would always tell us how it was not her fault we didn't have enough money for things and blame my dad. If there was nothing to eat for breakfast and we complained like small children do when they were hungry, she snapped, it's your father's fault so cry to him. I just learned never to complain and do without and spent my childhood taking care of her. My 10-year-old sister and 8-year-old me were trained to come right home from school, do our homework and clean the house and take care of ourselves. Don't ask mom to make dinner, make it yourself. Do all the house chores so mom doesn't have to do anything, to keep the peace. It sounds bizarre, but we thought that was normal as well as being hit and told on a daily basis that we were worthless. It got worse during my senior year of high school. My grandma died a few months before that summer, leaving my mom close to $75,000 back in 2000. My mom quit her job and blew through the money before the summer was over. After this, she would refuse to get another job and kept coming up with excuses not to work. She would say, I need a break, get off my back or I hurt my leg. While going out drinking with her friends and acting like a carefree teenager. So I spent my senior year working hard at school and harder at my part-time job after school. I pretty much took care of an overgrown child who refused to work, help out or take responsibilities. Any time a utility shut off or there was no food left in the house she just griped, you have a job, why can't you pay it? If I brought up the fact that my dad sent her child support, she would just complain that she had to pay my sister's tuition, which I later learned was a lie. She would flaunt that child support check and laugh, while referring to it as, mommy's paycheck. Flash forward to when I was about to choose a college. My mom keeps belly aching about the costs and of course has zero saved in a college fund. I couldn't afford a private university since I was offered a partial scholarship, so I decided to go to a reasonably priced and still highly regarded state university. During my freshman year I was pretty much able to swing the cost of tuition and room and board since last year of high school. I filed my taxes and FAFSA as soon as my W-2s came in, so I had a decent amount of grants. During my first year of college, I almost became unable to receive financial aid for my second year of college. Why? 
My W-2s were mailed to my home address and my mom being the caring and supportive mother she was, shredded them and threw them in the trash. I found out because my sister was home that weekend and saw it. My mom denied it happened. When I came home for spring break and pressed her for it, she lied and said her friend had them, her friend was a CPA. My sister called my mom out on this bluff by calling the friend who said she did not have any of our tax information. She was very concerned and told me and my sister to request duplicate W-2s, have them sent home and she will have my mom send them over to me. My mom was pissed that we had checked with her friend and called her out on her bluff, but true to her word her friend did my taxes for me and my FAFSA. I had offered to pay her or at least babysit for her but she told me it was okay. I think she knew my mom was mentally unstable and felt sorry for me and my sister. At this point I learned that my mom had not been helping out my sister at all with tuition like she claimed. My sister had mentioned it to my dad who had called her out and demanded to know where the child support was going to. My mom insisted he wasn't paying her enough cash and that's why she couldn't help us out. During my second year of college my W-2s were once again sent home and my mom once again accidentally threw them in trash. I had to request duplicate W-2s from my summer job not just once but twice, because she kept throwing them in the trash. I filed my tax return late that year and as a result my FAFSA was filed late, so I wasn't able to get the full amount I was receiving before. Anytime I complained to her about money or no food in the house, she would reply with, complain to your father. Well, the summer before my third year I was burned out on my mom's BS. I was working full time for the summer and saving as much as I could, during this she was refusing to help me out at all while I brought home food and such. She was pissed that instead of paying her phone bill, so she could make long distance calls to her online friends and spend all day in chat rooms, this was back when we had dial up. I had the audacity to spend my hard earned money on a cell phone and pay that bill myself. She told everyone I should just drop out, because I wasn't applying myself hard enough. I should add I was in the honors program. She would play martyr with all her friends about, it's so hard when you have kids in college and they eat you out of house and home and come to you for money. At the end of the summer I had saved a thousand dollars, but the school wouldn't let me move into the dorm unless I paid 50% up front, which I was about $10,000. I didn't know what to do as all summer the university had told me I was fine, but on move in day told me I couldn't move into the dorm. I called my dad in a panic and he spoke to someone who agreed to give me 24 hours. I moved in and the next day my dad showed up first thing with coffee and a donut for me and told me not to worry. He said he was going to fix this once and for all. We went from office to office on campus and he co-signed a loan, which he later paid off for me, and then he paid the remainder balance on my tuition for what the loan didn't cover. He then took me out to lunch and told me the truth. My mom never helped my sister with her tuition, my sister had graduated the summer before my junior year of college. My sister later confirmed this, but was not surprised my mom had lied again. My dad had co-signed the loan to help my sister out, which he later paid off for her. My sister was able to get a scholarship and do co-op to pay for her last two years. He also advised me that my mom was not so poorly off. As part of the divorce settlement, he had to pay the mortgage and property taxes on our house and even though my sister was now out on her own, he was still paying her the same amount of child support of about $2,000 a month. Despite the fact that I was living on campus for 75% of the year and my mom was not given me a dime. This means she could have easily helped me out with school, especially since financial aid kicked in when I was able to get it. I was hurt to think my mom was just living off my child support and constantly making me feel guilty for wanting anything or for not being able to cater to her every whim. She would get pissed that I wouldn't come home on the weekends to help her clean the house that I was not living in. I thought about how bad she made me feel growing up and made me feel worthless when in fact, had it not been for me or my sister, she would have not had a roof over her head after the divorce. He asks me to grant him access to my account so he could prove my mom was not paying for college and that I was paying for it myself. He asked me how I would feel if he took care of college instead of paying my mom child support. Sure sound good to me. He even told me I could spend my breaks at his house instead of my mom's. I called my mom and told her that my dad had taken care of the issue and she had no remorse. 
She told me it was my own fault for not planning my finances better and for pissing away my money all summer. I just played it dumb and said she was right, but pointed out I had done what she told me to do and complained to my dad. A month later my mom called me up in rage. My dad had spoken with the court and there was going to be a hearing in their divorce case. My dad had proven that my mom had not been paying for mine nor my sister's tuition for college. It seemed that this was the very reason my dad was obligated to pay child support until I was done with college. Since I was living on campus, it didn't make sense to pay her child support when I was not living at her place most of the year. My dad told the judge he would gladly pay for me to finish college, but he was not going to pay my mom any more child support nor pay the mortgage on the house. If my mom didn't want to take over the mortgage, they could sell the house and I could live with him over my breaks. My mom was freaking out over this and called me selfish. I just reminded her that my tuition must cost a lot more than what she got in child support, since she was never able to help me with costs of school. She just kept laying guilt trips on me about how I was selfish, because she didn't get to go to college right after high school and how she never got to have four carefree years of college. I pointed out to her that she had not worked since my grandma died about three years ago and that I was working and going to school at that time, while she got to live a carefree life. She pretty much ripped me a new one at that point. She tried to get back at my dad by not paying utilities on the house to make it seem like she needed the money. She then told me that the electric and water were now shut off, so if I wanted to come home for winter break I needed to help her out. By this time she had moved in with her boyfriend at his condo. I just told her that I would miss her, but that I would just go to my dad's for winter break. She was pissed and cried about how selfish I was for not wanting to come home for Christmas. Little necessary side note, the Christmas before was a catastrophe. It ended up in my mom throwing all my personal belonging out of the house, because there was a weekend where I stayed on campus instead of coming home to clean the house. The reason I stayed on campus was to learn for the finals the week after. Let me add that if I traveled home, I had to take two buses, two trains, spend $20 one way and wait for her to hopefully remember to pick me up at the train station. Which was a whole 20 minute drive for her, after I had traveled for up to 5 hours. I even told her I would help clean for the holidays once I came home for winter break. Her response? She took all of my things, threw some in boxes and threw them out on the front lawn. Most of my things were destroyed by being left in the rain and I discarded most of it. But I digress. I told my mom that I would come and visit her over my winter break once she got the utilities turned on. I told my dad what was going on. He said he and my stepmom, my half-brother and sister were thrilled I was going to stay with them for winter break. He could also get me a job in his office as well during winter break. He also called my mom and reminded her that the child support had not stopped, and they were going to list the house in a few months. So he emphasized what this nonsense was about the utilities being shut off. She was enraged, but magically came up with the money to turn them back on. The spring after, my dad officially took over my college tuition in the eyes of the court and even made sure I got my full financial aid since he had picked up W-2s for me. My mom lost her child support. She was told by the judge that she better cooperate with the sale of the house and keep up with the utility bills. Her boyfriend moved in with her till the house sold and she moved to another time zone. Without telling me or my sister, but that's okay I guess. The real kicker? It was cheaper for my dad to pay college costs, than to pay her child support. In the end, I grew closer to my dad and stepmom. I still have a relationship with my mom but she can't be trusted and lets me down a lot. So I don't include her in everything going on in my life. Strap in for the ride folks, because this is going nuclear. I'm in my 20s and as is my significant other that I'll call fiancé. Keep in mind I'm heavily disabled mentally and physically due to certain reasons caused by my biological parents, this will be important for later. I refuse to relive those events, So I won't say what happened to me during the time I lived with them growing up, but I will say my parents are divorced and absolutely hate each other. I have a service dog and she's the best thing that ever happened to me, I'll call her Melly. Due to my physical disabilities and my mental illness, I receive federal aid because I am physically unable to work as a result. I've been receiving benefits and using them for the right purposes like my rent, 
getting my college loan paid off, and among other things I'm using it to afford my medications for my conditions. Even though I am legally diagnosed by an actually certified professional, I want to make sure you understand I'm thankful for the help and I use it the right way. On the other hand you have my mother, who is a firm disbeliever of mental illness and states that because she had a bad life, it also means that no one else can suffer, and would always use that excuse with me. She was the person that the government dubbed in control of my aid benefits, that was until I moved away eventually when my now significant other helped me get out of that situation. During the time that I was with her, she wouldn't report to the government like she was supposed to. Even though I would repeatedly tell her she had to. Her reply, why don't you report it yourself then? I would have liked to do it myself, but the government doesn't want to report for me, since I'm not the one that the government dubbed was in charge. I tried on multiple occasions to convince her, to no avail. That's when I tried myself. After getting my name, they would ask directly for my representative, my mom, and cut me off as I was trying to explain the situation. When that failed, I tried going in person. Only to get met with, we need to talk to your representative or they have to be present for you to speak to us. This is because my mental illnesses made me physically incapable of distinguishing reality from the psychosis episodes I randomly get, so I could understand from their point of view. This did still kind of sting though. Imagine being told that because you have a mental illness, that you're unable to be a functioning enough adult to speak to someone. I got penalized for lying to the government as a result of her stupid choice. Understand that the years that I lived with my mom, I wasn't told how much aid and benefits I was getting. I knew it was more than she told me, since she and her boyfriend always seemed to get expensive things like jewelry and new phones around the time of my payments. In short the rule for my payments is that I can't have access to the money, but it has to be used for my needs, not hers. The only other option I had, other than magically getting better, was to get kicked out of the house and end up homeless without my benefits. But I needed those to treat my conditions though. My mother and her boyfriend would hurt me a lot, steal my meds etc. My fiancé learned the truth, because he witnessed my mom coming in and forcing my hand inside a burning hot pan while screaming about wanting more money I don't deserve. It took everything in him to maintain his composure, when he saw this she actually did that to me. He began to monitor everything, and we made plans that I would need to record my conversations with my mother, whenever I was in the same room. One of the ways my mother tried to tie me to her, was to get me in debt with anyone and everyone she could, such as doctor appointments, college etc. by stealing the cash that I had hidden from her to pay for those things. She was clearly also using my benefits for herself, which is against the law since it's meant for me. So my fiancé being the amazing man he is, he saved up money from his job and his active duty pay. He got me out of debt while keeping our evidence compiled and ready. Eventually the day of freedom came and I broke my chains. I snapped at my mother, because she tried getting rid of Melly. After about two years of saving and biting the bullet, my fiancé paid off my biggest debt so I was able to move out. He had me move in with him. We then had all the recordings and proof from the past two years and turned it all in. Social Security gave me the option to let me change my representative, so I then finally convinced them to switch the rep to being my fiancé instead of her. During this time, he was called to get stationed in a state that was very far away. Fortunately Social Security approved since he had orders to go. My kind older brother witnessed the situation unfold explained and told me what happened. Mom tried desperately to keep herself as my representative. She lost the money she was using for all her fancy things as well as her house, yes you heard that right. She used my benefit money to pay for the house without telling me. She was found guilty of federal fraud and falsifying federal documents among other things. I don't know how long she got, I didn't bother asking because I just completely cut her out of my life. My life is better now, my fiancé is amazing and still is my caretaker, my condition has improved since I was able to start treatment without having someone get in my way. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation.